telling me this is a beautiful spot. Um, and you're in you're in Severn. Yeah? That's right. Yep, yeah, you're in Severn Township. Gorgeous. Um, show me your studio. I'm dying to see it. All right, come, come on in. in. Beautiful. I can see how inspiring it would be to work here. Yeah, it's great. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Oh, this is gorgeous. Tony, it's great to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. And I'm so excited with the poster that you've created for the Mariposa Folk Festival. Thank you. It's beautiful. Thank you. I appreciate can, it. Can we just start off by just tell me a little bit about the image that you created? I spent some time going through Mariposa photographic archives over the last number of years. And I, I really wanted something that would sort of summarize the essence of what Mariposa was about. The idea of just music shared amongst people uh, in a very simple and casual way was, was the, the essence of what I was going for. And I wanted something that looked like Aurelia. I wanted something that would appeal to multiple generations. So there's this sort of a retro vibe going on with the, uh, the minibus and, and folks just sitting around a campfire sharing music together. Where did the whole concept come up Ooh. with and how did, how did that concept find its way into the finished product here? Yeah. Finding an idea for a piece of art is difficult if you try too hard. The best way to do it is just sort of bumble around mm. and look and listen and until something sort of shows up. And after, you know, 30, 40 years as an artist, you know when an idea that's, that's valuable shows up and then you just chase that idea. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was seeing these lines of little camper vans lined up against the lake and folks just kind of being there for the weekend, hanging out, camping together, sharing meals together. And I thought, that's what it's about. Mm -hmm. you know, whether, whether you're there in a camper van or whether you're just there walking down the street to visit the folk festival. Um, that's what it's really about. And so that idea is what I started to chase down. And, and then it's a question of, you know, how do you put that together? What's the best angle? What's the best color, color scheme? Um, lots of sort of technical things that you work out through various iterations and sketches. Um, trying to get that idea clean and simple so that other people will also understand the idea. And that's, you know, that's the work of, of editing and sketching and refining. So when I look at these characters and I look at this scene, who do you imagine those people to be? Well, it's interesting because um, I actually was thinking about my own family as I was sort of designing the people. Sitting around a campfire, I have a new granddaughter, I have children that play music, and I, I, I'm a guitar player myself. You know, I, I didn't want them to look exactly like my family, but uh, just sort of generic, younger, older folks meeting together, sharing music around a campfire. I wanted the, um, the painting to look like Aurelia, but I also wanted it to be timeless, something that could be today or 20 years ago, so that it, it crosses generations. Can you tell me a little bit about how you actually create this image? Because you, you obviously are a painter. There's, we're surrounded by your beautiful paintings that you do traditionally on canvas. This is different. How is it different? It is different. I, I use a number of different mediums. I paint in oils and acrylics, but I also paint using a, a stylus on a tablet. Mm -hmm. And that is basically exactly the same as, as painting with a brush, only it's digital. So I can create a painting uh, on, on, a, on a computer. Mm -hmm. uh, there is no actual physical original painting. It's just a digital file, mm -hmm. but I'm still drawing. I'm still picking colors mm -hmm. and, uh, and painting with uh, just not a brush. So that's how this, this image was created using some, uh, some software that, uh, that I prefer for, for painting and just building up that, that image in, in layers mm -hmm. and editing and cutting things out and putting things back in and redrawing them and enlarging them and shrinking them. When I work on a painting, if I need to change something, I've got to do a lot of like major paint surgery <laughs> to change something. Whereas digitally, I can do it very quickly. When you uh, have gone to Mariposa, I wondered if you ha feel a connection to the artist there. Um, is there something about being an artist, whether it be 
a visual artist or a musician where you find kind of commonalities? Yeah, well, art is art. It doesn't matter if it's if it's music or, or painting. In fact, you know, music is is art that plays with time and painting is art that plays with space. Mm -hmm. It's really the only difference between the two. So I find many similarities when I look at painting and music. In fact, there's times when I'm putting a color on the painting, I can kind of hear it. <laughs> it sounds strange, but uh, I, I can hear the high notes and the low notes and, uh, and the colors of the So yeah, there's a lot of parallels and, and I really appreciate that people can respond to art sort of emotionally visually or auditory, pretty much the same thing. So fascinating. You talked about not going for all of the folk music necessarily, but just for the like music in general and to be part of it. I just wonder if you have an anecdote or two. Uh, well, I think one of my favorite things about Mariposa is just wandering around the festival and meeting friends. Really, that's, that's the best part. When you are distributing these posters and they're selling them and, and fans are getting them. What are you hoping that they take away when they take a look at this image? Yeah, I hope it, 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 it spurs a memory for them. They can look at it years later and think about that time that they were there. And hopefully the idea of, of family and friends getting together over music will, will resonate afterwards. And I think because the image is so um, suspended in time, it will have that longevity, right? It's sort of not of a particular era or year. It's sort of hopefully will be universal. That was the idea. It would sort of, you know, transcend time, transcend generations, mm -hmm. even something that older folks can understand and younger folks can understand as well. How is it as an artist when you interact with people who are actually purchasing your art? What's that feel like? Well, it's great. I mean, I, I often say a, a painting is only half done when I'm finished because I found a way to put the idea on canvas or, or paper. Mm -hmm. And then someone else is receiving the idea. And that's when the painting is doing its work, right? When, when someone else is getting that idea and enjoying it. So the painting is really only half finished when I finish. It's kind of like music if you're playing to nobody. Right. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I, really, I don't really care too much to look at my own paintings because that's not why I painted them. I painted them for other people to get the idea that I hope will, will you know, come across. That's what I've heard from a lot of the artists who play this festival is it's about the receiving of the music from the from the people who are there, the attend the, the fans, the people who come to hear the music, that that's as much of the experience as what the artist is actually performing. A lot of people think artists make art for themselves. It's sort of a mis misunderstanding. We do, in a sense, make art for ourselves while we're exploring ideas and trying to get the feeling across. But it's pointless if there's no audience. And so, in a way, we really are making it for the audience, musicians, babies, probably the audience. Okay, you're reminding me of a Bruce Coburn quote. If a tree... Right. What is it? Falls in the forest. Does anybody hear it? Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you so much, Tony. This has been a, such a pleasure. You're